In today's video, we are going to see the data load strategies that are being used to load data into data warehouse. So to start with, we'll see the basics of ETL. Then we'll look upon two loading strategies, which are full load and incremental load. Usually in a data load, we have two systems, right? One is a source system and another is a target system. Okay, so the data moves from the source system to target system. Usually in data warehousing terms, we call it as upstream system and we call it as a downstream system. Okay, so the process to move the data from upstream to downstream usually consists of ETL. The full form for ETL is extract, transform, and load. So what is this extract, transform, and load? So consider our last example, right? So we have a website where we have an input field called country where the users fill in their data, which country they belong as a data. Okay. So consider they some users put their country India as IN, some put as IND, some put as INDIA. Okay. This can be true for some other country as well. So consider they put Australia as AUS, some just type AUS, TRA, LI, Australia completely. Okay. So now this is our source system, right? The website the OLTP system. Now we have to process this data and move into the OLAP system, which is our data warehouse. So this is our downstream system. This is our upstream system. So what happens usually is there is an ETL tool that we use in between. So what the ETL tool basically you does is it extracts the data from the OLTP system. So consider your OLTP system is in MySQL DB. Okay, so it will read the data from MySQL DB, do the transformation that you apply here. So the transformation can be mapping all the country names to proper country. So suppose we are mapping IN, IND, and INDIA to the correct country code INDIA. Similarly, we can map both of the Australia to say Australia. Okay, so we are mapping this. So do we, we are doing a data transformation here and then we are loading means writing. Okay, so this is read and this is write. So we're writing the data to our target system. Okay, which is our data warehouse. So now you understand the basic of ETL. So this whole process, okay, this whole process is done. Okay. And uh, so usually OLAP system, so the data warehouse load happen uh, during night. So there are bad jobs that are run. So the bad job extracts the data from the source system and loads the data to the target system. Okay, and the whole transformation happens in this between. Okay, so this is the ETL. In ETL process, there are two major loading strategies that are being used, okay? So first is full load, which we also called as truncate load. Now this truncate means em empty the table and load it back. And the other, the famous one is incremental load, which is also known as delta load. You might have heard the term delta feeds. So this comes from this loading strategy. So what usually happen is, I'll discuss the full load first. So what usually happen in a full load is you are reading the data from source and you are writing the data to target. Okay, so this is your source and you're writing to the target. Consider your data warehouse table. Okay, and this is your OLTP system. Okay, a MySQL DB for example. So what happens is sometimes there might be a requirement where you have to load the complete data from MySQL to data warehouse. Uh, so consider you have started your OLAP system today. Now you already have data in OLTP system. So the first, for the first time you have to load the whole data into the data warehouse. So that is a full load. 
so you move all the data from the OLTP system to OLAP system. So it might be 1 million records. You move all the 1 million records to the transformation using the ETL process here and you move the data into data warehouse. Okay. Now it involves one more thing. So the full load is usually a truncate load. When we say a truncate load means before loading the data, you have to empty the target table. Okay. You have to truncate the target table. Then you have to load the data. So this is called full load. Now what happens in an incremental load, which is more important, which happens daily. Now this is occasional. This is not done daily. Few of the loads can be truncate load. Few of the flow can be truncate load. That, that usually happens for small data set. The small data can be done full load every day. Okay, but not for a huge data set. The huge data set usually follow the incremental flow process. So what happens in an incremental flow is we usually we usually have source system and we have a target system. Now every day a certain amount of change records which are changing or inserted or you can say updated the records which have changed right only those records will flow through the ETL process to the target or your DW table. Okay, so consider a customer updated his address. Okay, so we will only move that customer's address to the only that customer's address. Okay, not the whole customer table, but only that customer data. Okay, to the target site DW table. So this is our change record, only the incremental change. Okay, so this is less and we will have a less impact on the system. Okay, so consider you have uh, 1 million records changing every day. So you will move 1 million, but the table at the source side might can contain 20 million data. So you will only move 1 million, the change records to the target side. Okay, so this is the incremental load. Now there is a way to identify incremental data usually in 90 percent of the cases there are some date columns that are used to identify okay date columns are used to identify the change so what will happen is suppose there is a customer table in mysql okay so this is a customer table in mysql so suppose there is customer id customer name and suppose customer uh, address for example we'll keep address in the same column so there would be some uh, insert date or update date columns okay we usually call this as audit columns they usually have this columns in table this support uh, data management okay these are few metadata that support data management of a table so what happens is whenever you change the customer address you also change the update date based on this update date so usually the data is red. So this is the incremental data or the delta feed and this data is moved to the DW. Only this record is either inserted or if this is a change record, this record is updated in the target site. So this is what we call as incremental data load. Now whole uh, management of this identifying the data and loading it into the target side identifying this data and uh, is done using that etl process right that you have the etl process the etl process usually does this extraction okay it identifies the change transforms the change and then writes it back loads it to the target so this is what the ETL, the whole loading strategy happens. Now, there is one more concept which is called ELT. The only change is loading and transformation is interchange. So it is extract, load, and transform. So what happens in this case, the data is loaded to the database, means data warehouse before doing the transformation so that it can leverage the power of the data warehouse database uh, uh, it can leverage the power of the database okay where the data warehouse is hosted so what happens it is loaded into a temporary table before loading into the final table so a temporary table is loaded first then the transformation happens on this temporary table then the data is loaded to the final table 
but this whole thing happens towards the target side toward on the data warehouse side they okay, not on the source side that is why it is load and transform on the source side only the extraction happens so the extraction happens and the data is loaded into the target side then the transformation happens and then uh, at the end transformation happens so the data is on the already on the dw so this is why it is called elt okay so this is usually in certain cases this this is this concept can be faster than elt -ET process because in etl process the transformation happens in between and then the, the data is loaded but in this case it leverages the power of the target side database so usually it can be faster in certain scenarios so this concludes our today's session for the etl process we'll see the measures and attributes in the coming session in the coming session we'll see measures and attributes